the iPhone 15 Pro and why I'm returning it. The iPhone 15 Pro is a magnificent piece of technology which has the potential to outperform many cameras that you can buy today. However, it comes with a few caveats. I decided to purchase the iPhone 15 Pro mostly to test out its camera features and to see if I could work it into my kit as a filmmaker. When I first got the phone, I was seriously impressed with the colors that this thing could produce, especially when you were shooting an Apple Pro Res Log. I even managed to get the grade as close as possible to my A7S III. You may be a little bit confused. Why am I returning a phone that I'm really impressed by? So I tried a few different things using it. I took some BTS photos and videos at a dance competition. I used it as a top-down camera. I took a bunch of photos of my space and tried to grade them in Lightroom Mobile. So the main reason why I actually got this phone was to test out the newer cage. This video is not sponsored, by the way. They just sent me this and said, make some content about it. They didn't actually tell me to make a video or anything. They just said, here, try it out. It's, it's nice to have, especially if you want to use this as a filmmaking tool. It's great because it comes with a bunch of quarter inch holes and two cold shoe mounts that you can install a bunch of accessories onto. It comes with these two handles, which makes it much easier to hold. It comes with two lenses, a blue anamorphic lens and an eight millimeter fisheye lens. The fisheye lens works pretty well for dance videos. However, I didn't find it to be that much different from the 0.5 camera on the iPhone. The anamorphic lens was pretty fun to use. I found the iPhone to struggle a little bit to find focus, but there is the Blackmagic camera app, which I'm gonna talk about now because you can use uh, like focus peaking and all kinds of things to help you out with that. I'm kind of jumping all around and I'm kind of trying to get to like the full scope of why I'm returning this, but also like why I enjoyed using it because I actually did manage to get a lot of really nice footage out of this camera. And I'm actually really impressed by the dynamic range on this camera. I keep calling it a camera, which is kind of ironic. The colors grading um, Apple ProRes Log is actually really, really useful and really easy. I found it actually just as easy as grading something like a Sony a7S III. Things I really, really love about the Blackmagic camera app is that you get full control of the settings. You can use H.265 codec for smaller file sizes. On this phone, you have to use an external SSD if you wanna shoot 4K60. So just because it's such a big ass file, like you you just need like a really fast SSD, I guess? I don't know, like I, I feel like the, the storage in here is fast enough, but I'm not really sure. It could be a heating issue. So I have a one terabyte SSD. It's at Samsung T7 and it worked perfectly. If you're on the Blackmagic camera app, you can actually go in and change the setting so that you can choose external storage instead of the internal storage, which is nice. I think if you want to use this as a tool, I think the Blackmagic camera app is probably the best one to use because I mean, Apple themselves use it too. So there's a few things about the Blackmagic camera app that I didn't really like. Uh, I really didn't like that there was so many touches to get to certain things. If I wanna put zebras on, I can't just like click a button and zebras come on. Like I have to go click and then I have to click and then I have to click on again. And then I have to click, if I want it off, I have to click off and then I have to click back or like swipe down and then get rid of everything and then swipe back to get everything back. It's like weird. I don't love it. Like, especially if you want to change the lenses on the regular camera, you just have to press one, two, three. But this one, you have to go up to the le top left, click that, go down to here, click that. It's not really meant to be used as like a quick solution to making video. Like I think that they're expecting you to like take your time to really dial in your settings and then start filming. And I think that's the point of the Blackmagic camera. Whereas the regular camera is just sort of like point and shoot. It's ready to go. So the iPhone 15 Pro is also just a very beautiful phone. It's fast, responsive, and it truly feels next generation. So it was just nice to have a fast new phone again. However, I do enjoy the form factor of the mini more, and I would still prefer to use it as like a daily driver. Like when I have this case on, like look at the size difference. Like I, I can't even, like this thing's like so much bigger. Handling this phone, it just feels like a tablet to me. It's one of the reasons why I got a smaller phone because it's just, you know, it's so easy to just handle with one hand. And like, I'm trying really hard not to use my phone as much these days. So when I have a big, fast 
high tech phone, like it makes me want to use it more. So I think the iPhone 15 Pro is a fantastic phone. And if you are someone who is starting to get into filmmaking or you are a content creator and just need something fast, high quality and reliable, then I totally recommend you get it. However, I have decided to return it. While I am really impressed by this camera system, and this phone in general, I just prefer regular cameras. Like I just prefer my full frame Sony cameras. I think that I'm just spoiled with the quality of these cameras. Like the depth of field that you get is just effortless. The colors are just vibrant. The dynamic range is just so smooth. I filmed myself doing a little talking head like this. I tried to make it as um, similar as possible. So this is kind of what it looks like filming on my Sony a7S III. And then this is what it looks like to film on my iPhone. So as you can see, the colors and the overall sharpness is very much very similar. And you know, the dynamic range is kind of similar, but a little bit different. When I was staring at it, like it feels too much like a phone. And I think it's just because it just has like zero depth of field. It has like almost no compression. Like there's no like compression of the, the lens, like because of how small the you know, the technology is. You can have the best dynamic range and, you know, the best colors, but the lens is really what makes the camera look good. And when I installed the other camera lenses onto this, like the anamorphic lens, it definitely helped. Like it gave it more of a filmic look. Like it was like, whoa, there's like more depth of field. There's some really interesting colors going on. I'm getting some lens flares. Like it's really cool. It just still felt like a phone. What I even found was that like, I would only ever use the 24 millimeter lens. It just like worked the best. But whenever I would go into like the telephoto lens, it just wasn't good. Like the dynamic range is not good. The colors drop off. Like it just felt like a huge quality downgrade and it didn't feel like a telephoto lens because when you use a telephoto lens like this, you get so much depth of field. You know what I mean? Like you zoom in, you got some separation going on and it's not changing the settings at all or anything. It's not doing any special algorithms. It's just the lens. It's just the science of glass. Whereas this, it's using a ton of processing. It's using a ton of AI processing and algorithms and stuff to try and make it look good. It's just, at the end of the day, it's a tiny little sensor that can only do so much. I think I'm really impressed and I filmed a couple of reels of filming me and I'm like, well, if I was filming like Instagram content, like only, like only Instagram content, I just wanted like vertical stuff. I just need something to look good right away. Then this thing's awesome. Because what I found was that when I was shooting in log, the process of getting this footage onto my computer and then grading it and then back onto my phone was the exact same process that I would take for my A7S III because I'd have to take the SD card out, put it on my computer, grade it, blah, 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 bring it to my phone. And it took the exact same amount of time. Even when I'm telling people like, oh, how to get the best footage out of your camera. I'm like, well, I'm sorry, but you probably won't because you're not gonna use the Blackmagic camera app because it's confusing for someone that's never done camera stuff. Just use the regular camera. The regular camera looks great. It looks awesome. There's no other settings you need to change. Maybe turn HDR off because it's weird. It's just not for me. I enjoy the process of shooting on my camera and shooting on my DSLR. I would rather lug around my DSLR than have to fiddle around with the settings on my phone and like, I enjoy this, but I don't enjoy it as much as my DSLR. I keep saying DSLR, I mean mirrorless camera, as much as my Sony camera. That is kind of why I'm returning. And also, I don't have a ton of money. And I bought this phone with my own money and it was $1,600 for the base model of the Pro. That's a lot of money to only use the 24 millimeter lens. I don't know, I it felt weird because for with that much money, I could get the new DJI RS4. I could get 35 millimeter 1.8 lens and then maybe some new SD cards. There's so many things that I could get for my DSLR with that much money that I would actually use, that I actually would want. Like if this is gonna be your only content creation device, then that's amazing. That's worth the $1,600 because you're getting a gimbal you're getting three lenses, you're getting professional video and photo, and you're getting like a really fast phone, all in one little package for 1600 bucks. My camera itself, the body without a lens, was 
$4,000. That doesn't make any sense for people who are just running a business. And then they have to learn how to use the camera and it take, that takes months and years to get good at. I, and it's amazing if, for, if you're in that category. It's just, it's not for me. While I did use this thing, if you want to get the best footage you can possibly get and you do choose to shoot an Apple log, I actually created a LUT for this phone. And I tried to make it as close to my Natty LUT, which is like the LUT that I use for my A7S III. So if you wanna purchase that LUT, it's only $7. I'm left it in the description down below. These LUTs are really supporting the channel a lot. So yeah, if you wanna go check out that LUT, it's in my description and I really appreciate it if you choose to buy it. And there should be a description on how to use it, how to um, apply it. That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. See you later. That's all you need, just that one camera.